Are you considering getting your amalgam fillings removed? Well, I am finally to the place where I am ready to tackle this challenge. So I wanted to put together this video today by the request of some of my readers to help you understand what I'm doing to prepare for the amalgam removal later this week, as well as things that I'm going to be doing afterwards to help support my body. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jessica from deliciousobsessions.com and today I'm actually shooting this video on request from some of my readers. So over the weekend and also in my newsletter for this week, I mentioned that I'm getting my amalgam fillings removed. So a lot of people were interested to see what kind of things I was doing to help prep for that and the type of things that I'm going to be doing after I get them removed to kind of help my body detox the heavy metals. So the first thing that I want to say here is that everybody is different. Um, when it comes to getting your amalgams removed, some people will get them removed and will feel awesome right off the bat. They may have no negative side effects from their body detoxing, while other people may really get sick for a little while as their body makes that shift and detoxes that mercury that's built up in their system. So I want to preface this by saying, you know your body best and you need to do the research and really prepare yourself for the things that could happen. Um, in response to getting your amalgams removed. You also need to find a very trained, qualified dentist that understands proper amalgam removal and is going to follow all the safety protocols whenever they're removing the amalgams from your mouth, as well as safety protocols for the staff that's working in the facility. So those are the two things that I want to preface this by is that my experience is going to be unlike anybody else's experience because our bodies are so unique and different. So I just encourage you to do your own research um, and I will put some resources down in the video description below to kind of get you started if you're considering getting your amalgams removed. But do your research, find a dentist that resonates with you and is properly trained and really prepare yourself and get yourself into a place mentally and physically where you are ready to kind of deal with this. So for me personally, I have wanted to get the rest of my amalgams removed. I have three left in my mouth. I wanted to get them removed for quite some time. I know that having them in my mouth um, could potentially be causing some health issues, but I really have not been in a place mentally where I could handle it. Um, and I also think that um, part of that is like, I didn't feel like my body was capable of handling the removal. And I also get really scared about um, the potential side effects that could happen whenever I get them removed. But I feel like I have come to a place where I am ready to tackle this project. So this is saying a lot about my state of my health physically and mentally at this point because I feel confident enough to take this project on. Um, if this had been one year ago, I probably would have just kept putting it off because I wasn't quite there yet. So I think that there is some mental um, challenges. Like you have to get to a place where you're mentally ready to take this on because I don't know how my body is going to react. I am staying optimistic that I am going to have very minimal, if any, side effects from getting them removed, but I don't know. I could potentially get really sick. So I'm kind of preparing myself for both, and um, I'll just have to go with the flow and see what happens. So it is a little bit scary, but it's also very exciting for me because I wanted to get them removed for so long, and this is actually one of the things that's at the top of my list for my preconception planning that I'm doing for my body to get my body ready to have a baby. So um, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is get those amalgams removed and also give my body plenty of time to get those heavy metals out before we conceive. So I'm excited to be able to scratch this off my list and whatever happens, happens. So I'll just have to go with the flow, but I'll definitely report back um, after I get them removed and keep you guys abreast of any changes or anything that I could be going through. Because um, I think that, you know, it's, it's beneficial for people to see how other people react, though keep in mind that your reaction may be completely different from my reaction. So um, the biggest thing I think, the most important thing that you need to do that I mentioned was find your dentist that you trust that has been properly trained in amalgam removal and somebody that really resonates with you. So that was um, a big part of my preparation for getting the amalgams removed. I was lucky and found a dentist that's local here 
who actually um, has been trained with Hal Huggins. And Hal Huggins, if you're not familiar with him, I'll put information about him down in the video description below. But he is like the leading expert on amalgam removal and mercury toxicity and all of that. So definitely check out his stuff. And if you're new to amalgam removal or if you're considering it and don't know where to get started, his site and his book are the number one place for you to start. So I'll leave all of that information down in the video description below. So make sure you check that out. So the biggest thing um, that I had to do was find a dentist that really resonated with me and that I trusted to do the removal properly. So I found that dentist last year and got all of the estimates from him. And so it's taken me about a year to get to the point where I felt like I was ready to take this on. So one of the major things after finding the dentist that I um, started doing in preparation, and I actually didn't even realize that it was preparation for this procedure at the time, but now that I look back on it, I realize it's really one of the most important things that I could have done, and that is my mineral balancing protocols um, that I've been doing with the hair tissue mineral analysis. You guys have heard me talk about that. I've got a video about it that I'll link to right up here, um, and I've also got a ton of articles on my site about um, the hair tissue mineral analysis and also personal articles that I've written about my experience with that. So check out the video description below for more information on that. So I realize now that the getting my minerals balanced and really working on building out my mineral stores is one of the most important things that I could have done in preparation for getting my amalgam removal um, done. So I, um, I'm really happy that I've been working on that and I think that that is part of the reason that I'm actually feeling confident enough to take this on. I feel like my health is in a better place than it was last year and I'm just going to be able to handle this. Um, and I've learned so much about the importance of minerals in the body and especially the importance of minerals when it comes to chelating those heavy metals and getting those moved out that I just feel more capable now. So. The mineral balancing is probably the number one thing that I have been focusing on in preparation for getting my amalgams removed. So in addition to that, um, I am doing just some really simple things. I think people think about amalgam removal and they get kind of overwhelmed with it. They feel like there's all this stuff that they need to do and um, it can be overwhelming and be really scary and the uncertainty of it all. I, I come, totally understand that. So. That's um, a big part of where I mentioned at the beginning of this video about getting your head in the right place and really being able to take this on. So I am doing, um, I'm working very closely with my nutritional therapist, my NTP, who is Lydia over at Divine Health from the Inside Out. And she is really giving me some strategies that are totally manageable for me and my busy schedule, um, but things that are, can make a really big impact on how my body reacts to the removal. So. Definitely work with a practitioner who understands um, amalgam removal and kind of how to chelate your body. I recommend working with somebody who does HTMA and really consider doing some um, hair tissue mineral analysis and mineral balancing before you take on an amalgam removal. I think it's really important. So definitely, regardless of if you do HTMA or not, and if you move ahead with getting your amalgam removal, make sure you're working with a practitioner who can offer you some support as far as um, things that you should be doing prior to the removal and after the removal to support your body. So definitely do that. So some of the things that I'm doing to help support my body kind of pre and post is I'm focusing on giving my body lots of minerals. So in order to do that, I'm still following my mineral balancing protocol, which is a certain, um, certain set of supplements that I take every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and I'm also drinking a lot of bone broth and I'm adding extra gelatin in there too. Um, I had posted on social media over the weekend, I think on Instagram, I stockpiled 11 gallons of chicken stock a couple of weeks ago in anticipation of my removal, which is taking place later this week. So I wanted to have tons of chicken stock and I want to make sure that I'm drinking a lot every day. Um, this week I'm focusing on doing at least two cups every day in addition to soup. So I'm getting really when you add in the soup, I'm probably getting about a quart of chicken stock per day. Um, so that's a lot of minerals, a lot of gut healing, um, nutrients and gelatin and everything. So I just heat up my broth. I add a little spoonful of grass fed butter, a lot of sea salt, and I'm actually putting some turmeric and salt and pepper and garlic in there, the turmeric to help support inflammation. Um, and then the butter kind of helps and the black pepper help the turmeric work better as well. So um, bone broth is one of the major things that I'm doing uh, for this week and I'm also going to be flooding my body with more bro bone broth once I get my amalgams removed. So that's the number one thing that I'm doing. 
Um, I am also focusing on supporting my detox pathways because these heavy metals have to be excreted from our body and the detox pathways in our body is how we do that. So the liver is the most important detox organ and so I'm doing a lot of things to help support my liver function right now. So a few of those things are I'm taking um, a liver support supplement that I got from Perfect Supplements. It is a great um, combination of liver supportive herbs. So I'm taking that. I'll leave a link down to the one that I'm taking down below. So check that out. Um, and I am upping my dose. I'm taking the high level dose that they uh, recommended. So I'm taking two to three capsules with breakfast, lunch, and dinner kind of in preparation for that. And then I'm going to keep that same dose um, after I get my amalgams removed. So another thing that I'm doing to support my detox pathways, in addition to the bone broth and um, the liver uh, supporting herbs, is focusing on coffee enemas. You guys have heard me talk about coffee enemas before, and I actually have a blog post on my site about them, so check that out um, down in the video description below. It goes into detail about what they are and why they're beneficial, but they're a great way to help support your digestion and support your liver function. So I'm focusing on doing those at least once a day. In the mornings, um, I'm doing them for about 30 minutes every morning, kind of leading up to the procedure, and if I can work it into my schedule, I may try to do um, after I get the amalgams removed, I may try to add another session in and maybe do two a day. It's really going to depend on how I'm feeling, but that's one way to help support your liver um, and get that detox pathway flowing. So definitely check out the video description below for a link on an article about coffee enemas. I'm also focusing on my infrared therapy lamp, which I did a video on, so make sure you check that out. I'm going to link to it right up here above my finger. Um, it's really simple to make your own near-infrared uh, therapy lamp, and um, I showed you how in that video. It's really cost-effective, doesn't take up a lot of space, and the infrared therapy is another great way to help support your detox pathways. Um, and uh, in preparation for the amalgam removal, I'm really upping my use of the infrared lamp. So um, I actually use that in conjunction with my coffee enemas, and I'm really focusing on my liver and my torso area. So I'm doing most of my therapy in that area to kind of help those pathways um, and just support them as much as I can. So I have a post going up on my site later this week too that's going to go into more depth about um, what infrared therapy is, why it's beneficial, and again how to make your own lamp at home if you choose to do that. We've got the bone broth, we have herbs, we have the coffee enemas, and um, the infrared lamp. So those are the four main things that I'm doing. And I also am going to start um, doing some castor oil packs with the lemon essential oil um, in the castor oil pack, and I'm going to do that over my liver area. So I'm going to do that each evening before I go to bed, um, probably in conjunction with another infrared therapy um, session. So I try to do my infrared therapies in the morning for about 30 minutes, and then in the evenings before I go to bed. Um, and it's just really soothing, really relaxing, and I'm going to kind of up the support that it gives. So I'm going to do the um, castor oil packs with lemon essential oil. The lemon essential oil is really great um, for supporting those detox pathways, and it's just great for the liver as well. So I'm going to be doing that as well. So check out the video description for more information on that. That's really what I'm doing. Um, you know, in addition, I'm just doing my mindful movement where I'm listening to my body. I'm going for my walks and doing some gentle yoga, some, you know, just things to get the lymph system moving around, focusing on keeping my stress levels down. I'm not feeling really stressed out about this. I do have a tiny bit of anxiety, a little bit of nervousness about the procedure later this week, but I think that's really a lot. Um, it's because of the uncertainty. I just don't know how I'm going to react to it. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to go with the flow, but I'm not letting myself get really worked up about it. I'm not stressing out about it. I'm going to keep myself calm because you know what? I will handle whatever happens. Um, and I have Lydia, my NTP, who offers a lot of support for me. And I know that if I happen to have a really, really bad reaction to getting them removed, I've got resources and I have people that I can turn to that are going to be able to help me. So I am just confident that things are going to go smoothly. So um, really, I, I don't want people to be stressed out or frightened about getting their amalgams removed, but um, I want them to understand that they really do have to get to a place where they've educated themselves and they've also kind of gotten their head in the right place so that they, um, they're just prepared to take this on. I, it was a long process for me to do that, to kind of get to this point. And people are going to get there um, at different speed. If you have any questions about anything that I've talked about today, 
Make sure you leave me a comment down below. I would be happy to answer your questions. You can also email me through my site and feel free to ask any questions that you have. I, if I don't know the answer, I can at least give you some resources to get you started. I'm here to help people live a healthier, happier life. So I would really, really appreciate your support by giving me a thumbs up if you liked this video and also making sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos on real food and health and wellness. Your support actually makes it um, easier for me to reach more people on YouTube. So I absolutely appreciate it. You guys are the reason that I do these videos and I really hope the content is helpful for you. If you have any questions about the information that I've gone over today, make sure you check out the video description below for lots of links to helpful info. But you can also leave me a comment or shoot me an email or ask me questions on social media and I am happy to help you guys out. I am going to sign off for now, but I will be back again soon. And you guys have a great day.